Hey, what's up guys? This is Alex here and today we're going to be continuing on the endgame puzzle solving together. And of course, uh, you know, this being the second episode only on the endgame puzzles, we're going to still be looking at the two empty squares, at least for the next five puzzles. And then uh, the next episode, we'll try to step up the complexity a little bit and go for the th ones with three empty squares. So, um, yeah, so let's start with the two empty squares puzzle, number six where we left off the other time in episode 1. So essentially this is Black's turn to play right now, and we, yeah, I mean, with the benefit of the app, we have 23 discs, and of course if you're playing in an OTB actual tournament, you would probably have to count out, you know, uh, the number of discs that you have before you actually try to simulate a line and decide where to play. So right now it's Black's turn to play, you essentially have two choices. Uh, both choices, uh, allows you a swindle and a pass of move for white. It's just about determining which one has more discs. So using the plus minus method, uh, there isn't any minus in this uh, puzzle at least. So you have 23. If we were to start off with H8, we would have 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. And since this is black, consequently when we play here, we'll be able to get 29, 30, 31, 32, and 33. So starting with H8 would actually give you a sufficient number of discs uh, in order to win the game. But if you were to start with H4 instead, what would happen is actually you get 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then finally when you play the H1, because this has turned to black, you get 31 and 32. So that would actually result in a draw. So evidently uh, H8 eight being first would make more sense than h4 so the reason why h4 doesn't win you the game is because it cuts across to this f6 disc and kind of obstructs yourself from getting the two discs over here of course you can argue that h8 cuts across to the same disc at f6 but it only obstructs one disc uh, for your future move to h4 in order to capture uh, this disc over here to e7 so losing two discs versus losing one disc, obviously you want you know to lose less. So in this situation, we'll go with H8 and then follow up by H4 and we win the game with 33 to 31, just enough. So let's move on to the next puzzle then. Okay, so right now it is Black's turn to play. So this puzzle is uh, more about capturing a swindle. And so basically, if you were to start off with H8, you basically just flip one disc on G8, and you allow white to actually capture H7. But if you were to play H7 first and block white from capturing H7, then you can follow up with one more move to H8. Making consecutive moves is always better uh, in terms of Othello in general. In the mid game, you want to look for tempo. In the end game, you want to sweep as many discs as possible, especially when you're left with very few empties. So the priority here would then be capturing more squares. I mean, capturing more discs. So essentially, you end off the game with H8. That's a pretty much straightforward one. It's just like a binary option. You just need to look for the swindle and yeah, make two consecutive moves and you'll be fine. So that's puzzle number seven. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this one is also similar. Uh, it's also part of Swindle. So if you did follow my uh, episodes, uh, in the intermediate episodes at least, we briefly touched a little bit on Swindles as well, uh, mid-game Swindles, and also a little bit on end-game Swindles. So it is important to actually understand the concept of Swindle, which is basically making two consecutive moves uh, in, you know, you, in a region whereby you have two squares. So right now it's Black's turn to play again. If you were to play A7, you basically flip these four discs along the A column, and you also flip this diagonal disc on the B column, which is B6, and you give up white a move to white on B7. So this would be like a plus 5, minus 1 situation, which is not too great, as opposed to if you were to play B7 here and basically swindle because of this Black's control of the entire seventh row, you can make consecutive moves by playing black here and then followed by black one more time because white basically passes with no legal move and black can play one more move. So 
This is not so much about counting, but rather swindle uh, logic. So as you expand the number of squares that are, I mean, the number of empty squares that are left on the board, and in terms of, you know, how far you are to the end game, the, the end game tends to become more complex. And sometimes it's not so much about the actual counting, but rather playing lines, but rather playing lines that actually make sense. So in this case, it would just be a swindle. So obviously the swindle that gives you two consecutive moves is a lot better than just taking one move and allowing your opponent to take the other move. So let's play the second consecutive move and we'll win the game with 38 to 26. So I think this is relatively straightforward at the moment. So let's move on to puzzle number nine. So over here it's White's turn to play. Uh, there is no swindle situation here, so this is more of a pure counting. So assuming if you are on the board and you counted, you have 32 white this, you can do uh, also a plus minus method. So if you were to start with G8, it will be plus 2, 1, 2, minus 1 when black responds to F8. So that's an aggregate of plus 1. And of course if you were to play uh, F8 instead, it would be plus 1, 2, 3, and then black plays G8, which is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So Starting with F8 gives you an overall aggregate of minus 1, which wouldn't make sense So uh, as compared to the other option, which is plus 1. So let's go with this one, and we basically win the game with 34 to 30. So still relatively simple. Uh, I hope you know that's simple enough. So let's move on to the last, epi uh, the last puzzle <laughs> for this episode. So that is puzzle 10. Okay, so this is Black's turn to play. Again, this is about swindling uh, your opponent, so about making two consecutive moves. So if you were to choose to play um, F8 right now, you would flip five discs, and you basically allow white to counter with B8. But if you were to just go for B8 right now and block white's move, you realize that white does not have a legal move to F8, so it, you are not in a hurry to actually play to F8. So why not just black block uh, you know, white from going in to B8 first, and then once white passes, you basically play the last move as well, uh, with, you know, the last move being at F8, flipping 5 this and adding 1, so you get 34 to 30. So essentially, that is um, the 5 puzzles that I wanted to go over today, and of course, in the next episode, we'll start looking at uh, puzzles with three empty squares and kind of see how the complexity scales up. So, you know, if you're at home and, you know, you're, you're just starting out with the end game puzzles, just keep on going to do, you know, there are 350 puzzles available on the Otello Quest uh, application and uh, under the study section, basically. So, yeah, why not uh, go ahead and practice? And of course, if you feel up to it, you can go ahead and try three empty squares and above. So I'll see thank you for so thank you for joining me in this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.